One of the greatest proofs of the Prophet Sallallahu prophethood is his character. It's his akhlaq. I mean, you saw him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are witnessing the sincerity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Allah and to the creation. And you can't help but walk away from a certainty that he is the Prophet of God. And if you think back to Mecca, in Mecca, they were trying to compromise with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were sort of feeling him out testing him out, you know, is it that you're doing this because you want some money? Is it because you want this? Is it because you want that? What do do tudhinu fayudhinu? And Allah says, they wish you would compromise and they would happily compromise. And the Prophet Sallallahu continues to endure persecution and not take up that offer. And it shocked them because these were a morally bankrupt people. But now you're in Medina and no one would bat an eyelid if the Prophet Sallallahu lived a decent life. But here you have the Prophet Sallallahu living in absolute poverty and you are witnessing it in front of your eyes and it's even worse than what meets the eye. The Prophet ﷺ could have been probably one of the richest people in history. He may have been the richest man in history if he just snapped his finger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu or Uthman radiallahu anhu or Talha radiallahu anhu. He could have had all the palaces that he wanted. And again, people would have felt like he deserves the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is our leader. We adore him. We want him to live in this way. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instead chooses to live this extremely humble life. And because of how giving and caring he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was easy to miss just how hungry the Prophet ﷺ was and how much poverty he was actually in ﷺ. For one, Anas ibn Malik anhu says, the Prophet ﷺ never had food for the next day. Not once did the Prophet ﷺ have food stored for the next day. So every day, the Prophet ﷺ was just getting by. And the only person that recognized him one night was actually Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa goes out in the middle of the night and he runs into Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And as they bump into each other, there's a realization that they're both out looking for food. And you think to yourself, how is it that the most beloved man in our society is hungry and nobody noticed the signs that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is driven out of his home at night to get a few bites to eat so that he can survive sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you go on and you see that as time goes on, and especially when things are very difficult, it's very obvious that the Prophet sallallahu is suffering more than everyone else. We talked about the khandaq and the trench and Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu seeing the Prophet sallallahu stomach bloated alayhi salatu wasalam out of hunger in those days and recognizing that the Prophet Sallallahu had not had anything to eat for days. Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu saying to Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha, I heard the voice of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you could hear the hunger in his voice. Can you imagine that? When someone is so hungry that you could actually hear the hunger in his voice Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asks Umm Sulaim radiallahu anha if she has anything to serve and she says, of course, for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu would reflect on this hunger and how it was. And when you saw him on what you thought was his worst day, the Prophet Sallallahu would actually tell you that there were days that were far worse than this. And he said, the Prophet Sallallahu once said that I experienced 30 nights and days that were the hardest nights and days of my life where Bilal radiallahu anhu and I were together and we did not have a single thing that was suitable for a living creature to eat except for the little that was hidden under the armpit of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. SubhanAllah, I mean, can you imagine that? 30 nights, the Prophet sallallahu with Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and they had nothing suitable for a living creature to eat. And they would just take the crumbs of whatever they could find and they would eat whatever they could find Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And that's why you have this famous incident of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu entering upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and seeing his situation and it's shocking Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, the most detailed narration is the one where Umar radiallahu anhu actually describes the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I entered into the house of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was sitting on his hasir. He had this mat. And by the way, the Prophet Sallallahu bed was his couch. Okay, so what he would sleep on Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night, he would fold it up and he would sit on during the day. 
and you would come and you would sit next to him on that and the Prophet ﷺ would put a cushion between you and him and that was his furniture Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I walked into his house and I sat down and I saw the Prophet ﷺ laying down on his mat and he had nothing that was between him and the mat except for his waist wrap Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there was nothing else to protect him from that hasir. And because it was made of branches, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rises up, I saw the marks on his body. We're not even talking about a comfortable mattress here. We're talking about the marks of the branches on his body. And I looked around his house and all I saw in his room Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a handful of barley and a few leaves in the corner. And then he had this water skin that was hanging up in his room and it barely had enough water in it. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I couldn't hold myself. I started to weep. And the Prophet sallallahu says, Ma yubkik ibn al-Khattab. Why are you weeping, O ibn al-Khattab? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, how can I not weep? That mat has put marks on your body and this is all that you've accumulated. And I can't see anything other than these few things while Kisra and Caesar live amongst gardens and rivers and you are the Prophet of Allah, you're the chosen one, you're the beloved one, you are so much more deserving of these things and this is all that you have. And what does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Ala tarda ya Umar, ana lahum dunya wa lana al-akhirah. Aren't you pleased, O Umar, that for them is the dunya and for us is the hereafter. You see, the Prophet Sallallahu did not want Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu to just walk out of that room and come away with, well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi lives in poverty. He wanted to impart a concept upon Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that is binding upon the ummah, binding upon the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that for us is the hereafter. We are a people of the hereafter. We are a people that strive for the riches and the wealth of the hereafter. We don't bother ourselves with the wealth of this dunya in a way that would distract us and preoccupy us. So aren't you pleased, O Umar, that we have the akhirah and they have the dunya? Let them take the dunya. We have the akhirah, we have the hereafter. And the next time you're feeling entitled and you're feeling like, why don't I have more? And why isn't Allah giving me this? And why isn't Allah giving me that? And you're feeling a sense of sadness and maybe even that you're being deprived. I want you to remember this narration from Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha radiallahu anha would never eat a full meal after the death of the Prophet ﷺ except that she would start to cry. And they would say, why are you crying, ya Ummul Mu'mineen? Why are you crying, O mother of the believers? And she said, ma ashba'u ala ta'amin illa wa ana abki bi anni athkuru hala lati faraka alayha sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dunya I don't eat any food except that I start to cry because I remember the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left this dunya. She said, Wallahi ma shabi'a min khubzin wa lahmin marrataini fi yawm. I swear by Allah that he never got to eat to his fill Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of bread or meat twice in a day. He never had two meals in a day Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was remembering the difficulty that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived with. So whether you lived in his society or you live now, and you start to think about the entitlement to this world, remember that the most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala experienced the most difficult poverty, and that was only the beginning of his pain, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu alayhi, sallu alayhi, sallallahu alayhi. Wa sallam